Cybersecurity and consumer electronics are the two mutually exclusive? They don't have to be. Up next here at CES 2016, we talk to Brian Krebs about it. Secure Ninja. If you follow cybersecurity, then you already know who Brian Krebs is from his blog, Krebs on Security. Here at CES 2016, Secure Ninja TV producer John Miller caught up with Brian Krebs to discuss what companies should be doing to protect themselves and their customers. This year's Consumer Electronics Show featured the conference's first ever cybersecurity forum, which brought together many security experts to discuss how consumer devices and their associated services have become a new attack surface for malicious hackers. I spoke with Brian Krebs after his tech talk, and we discussed the dangers of ransomware and some basic guidelines for what companies should be doing to protect their systems and customers from attacks. Okay, so the first question, you mentioned you have a slide there about ransomware and how you mentioned that some company that had a multi-million dollar system, they were willing just to go ahead and throw down 300 bucks to get their data back. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Why is that such a common occurrence these days? Um, I think it, it has a lot to do with the way that um, cybercrime is commoditized. So there have been a number of, of uh, criminal uh, crimeware packages, if you will, uh, that make it sort of a plug-and-play operation uh, for would-be cyber criminals to deploy this stuff. And so um, a lot of it gets deployed, as I said, via opportunistic attacks. So, you know, it used to be um, when uh, the fraudsters would get on your network or on a computer, they would harvest the passwords and they would put a bot on there and maybe turn it into a spam bot and stuff like that. These days, um, you know, a large percentage of the time, I think, I don't have empirical data, but I, my guess is if they're, uh, when they get that access, they're uploading CryptoLocker. Uh, because, it, you know, I think uh, there was a, they, they took down an operation, a CryptoLocker operation. Uh, it was a global law enforcement and security company effort. And they got a look at how many of these organizations actually paid the ransom or how many individuals. And it was a pretty small, percentage, I think it was like three or four percent, but think about that. Three or four percent response rate, that's pretty good, especially if you're asking for three hundred or a thousand dollars per victim and you're victimizing tens of thousands of organizations. So part of the reason that I think we're seeing uh, uh, an increase in ransomware attacks is because it's easy and it's a, it's a sort of a cookie cutter way for these guys to make money. And, and it seems like it's very easy to get that um, malware onto the systems. It is, yeah. Like, like I was saying, so most of these are, are opportunistic attacks. So um, ransomware very often gets on the system. Uh, just you know, didn't that didn't have to be somebody downloaded something off the internet. Uh, they're browsing the web and they browse to a site that's hacked, or it's running. Uh, it's got ads on it that are being pulled from some ad network, and the guys just uh, the cyber criminals just upload uh, their own ads, poisoned ads, uh, to these networks. And what's insidious about it, about it is. You know, you're infected for some amount of time before it lets you know <laughs> that you're infected. And then you get this little pop-up that says, uh, hey, uh, friendly neighborhood cyber criminal here, sorry to interrupt, but uh, we've encrypted all your data. You know, you'll pay this money or, or not, have a nice day. Um, you know, so. And, and you're, you're, you're vulnerable to the, the, sometimes, in many cases, the lowest members of your organization. Yeah, and well, it, it can, the other part of the problem with ransomware is it can quickly metastasize into a much bigger problem. So most of the uh, commercial ransomware packages, the crimeware that's out there today, will go and search um, and attempt to encrypt not only the files on the infected computer, but they'll try to access the servers uh, that may be available to that computer. And if it can, if it can read or write those uh, on those servers, it'll encrypt those files too. And so what's interesting is it. We, we tend not to hear about a lot of ransomware attacks. Uh, well, number one, most companies don't want to disclose when they've had a breach or they don't want to disclose that they're funding terrorism or whatever it is. Uh, but, but what's interesting is, and so we, we don't really have a good sense of how, how damaging and how prevalent these are. But when you look at uh, the stories that have been written about ransomware victims, they're almost always <clears throat> uh, public organizations. Uh, police departments, cities, towns, municipalities. Why? Well, because they have to account for the money they spend, and when they pay, they have to they have to say, "Hey, this this three hundred dollars we spent was on ransomware." They can't hide. They can't hide. Yeah. Um, so, 
All right, so at the very last question here is that you said at the, at the very end you had this list of things organizations yeah. can do. Um, how does this all tie in? One of them was, you know, uh, penetration testing and everything. So where, how can organizations find that they are really vulnerable to these sort of attacks? Well, the, the things that I was, I was listing uh, in that slide, um, they're not optional things. Um, if you're not doing them, if you're not uh, taking stock of where your crown jewels are, what kind of protections you have, who should have access to that, how you would know if somebody who wasn't supposed to get access did, um, the, the penetration testing, developing a strong uh, and, and vibrant incident response plan, uh, preparing for denial of service attacks. Uh, these are things that if you're not doing these things in this day and age, uh, you're probably already breached. You're certainly already breached. Almost certain, yeah. yeah, I would say. And so this is just business as usual. This is just how you have to do business these days. Yeah, uh, you know, it's the, it's the price of doing business in, in 2016. Um, you know, because that, that's really one of the messages that I try to get across in my talk, which is everything about business rides on technology these days. And organizations are, in, many of them are in complete denial about how reliant they are for every aspect of their business on the internet, on computers, on the technology. And they take it for granted. You know? And they, they look at these tools as productivity tools. And they don't understand that if they don't lock them down, those tools can just as easily be used against them. Now we know we've already released some great videos from CES, but we still have more to come. So make sure you subscribe to our channel, Secure Ninja TV. Also follow us on Twitter, check out our Facebook page, check out our Instagram, so you don't miss anything that we're producing here from CES 2016. I'm Alicia Webb, thanks for watching.